hello everyone today we are going to discuss about the topic proteins welcome to my channel my name is dr sharif and i am here to explain about <coughs> biology for engineering subject that the fourth topic we will discuss about proteins so far we have discussed carbohydrates nucleic acids and as well as the applications of like dna vaccine rna vaccine and as well as uh, dna fingerprints so the next topic is proteins so you know that proteins are nothing but what we take as a food it contains proteins our body requires protein to in order to perform any kind of functions right especially for any kind of for our, any muscle repair or any muscle you know every day we are in our body you know millions to billions of cells are dying and new cells are taking birth and in order to maintain this cycle keep going on we require protein we take protein in terms of food right it can be vegetarian non vegetarian or nowadays we are having the supplements which will act as vegetarian and i mean which will act as a you know, vegetarian but the composition can be a non vegetarian whatever the composition we are getting what are the vitamins we are having a non vegetarian the same vitamins we can extract and we can make some kind of supplements uh, like you know meat like proteins and all so that even vegetarians can have those kind of proteins so that they can they should not miss out the vitamins which are present in the non vegetarian or meat right so let's start to begin with proteins we will start with what the definition of proteins so proteins are nothing but a large complex molecule made up of a chains of amino acids right so what are these amino acids they will act as a building blocks of amino acids sorry building blocks of proteins so amino acids one amino acid to next amino acid third fourth fifth like, like that if you are having the chain of amino acids you will be getting the protein for that we are having primary secondary tertiary structures and all but as of as far as your uh, syllabus is concerned we are not going to study the structures of proteins we are just here to explain about the proteins and their importance in daily life and some of the applications so they play a vital role in uh, structure function and as well as regulation of the cells tissues and organs so here you can see the whole topic is explained in one sentence the proteins play a very vital role or important role in structure of cells or of tissues or organ or functioning of a cell or tissues and organs requires protein and also regulation of cells tissues and organs requires protein so all these things needs protein so next we have the functions of proteins catalyzing chemical reactions first when very most prominent function of protein catalyzing the chemical reactions in our body various of cycles are going on biochemicals uh, you know biochemical cycles are going on like krebs cycle glycolysis pathways many pathways are going on to catalyze these re chemical reactions a protein is necessary then transporting the molecules from one place to another place it can be the hem example hemoglobin which is a protein blood protein it takes oxygen it carries oxygen and supplies it to all part of the body every cells of the body it gives oxygen then providing mechanical support and finally regulating the cell behavior proteins as food proteins are essential nutrients that provide the body with amino acids which are building blocks of the body's tissue right next proteins are found in many different ways foods ingredient meat poultry fish di dairy products beans lentils tofu eggs these all are the forms of proteins so proteins are vital components of a healthy diet as they help to build and repair tissues right they will help to build and repair the tissues and support immune function that is we you know what is immune system it is nothing but our own defense mechanism for our body like we have army for every country 
similarly we have something defense mechanism inside our body which is called as immune system whenever daily we are getting many you know what to say from mosquito biting to the many infections we are getting daily but we are not falling sick because of the immune system because immune system is taking care of them they are producing the antibodies which will go and kill that foreign antigens which may be from either from virus or bacteria or any microbes or maybe any foreign objects so that the immune system will act as a defense system and it will keep our body healthy only in certain cases immune system will fail to ex detect the foreign antigen and then that's why that's when our immune system are, is low uh, to defend or to kill the antigens of particular virus or bacteria that's when we will get the diseases and then yeah so build and repair the tissues support immune system functions and as well as regulate the various metabolic processes inside our body so the protein play a very important role here so the body also uses proteins as a source of energy when carbohydrates and fats are not available so we know that carbohydrates we studied which will act as a basic source of energy and also fats when there is when we run out of you know for imagine during fasting and all we will run out all of of energy during that time this fat will be there so that will be converted into the carbohydrates and then that will be converted to energy if these two things are not there protein will no, not only uh, doing all the above listed functions but also it will act as a source of energy to the body now the quality of proteins in a food is determined by the types of amino acids protein is made up of what amino acids so the quality of the protein totally depends on the amino acids right How, on from which it is built to ensure the adequate protein intake it is important to consume a variety of protein rich foods we cannot rely on only one food we should have a variety of food why because every food has got different different kind of amino acids so that different different proteins are there that's why we need to to ensure the adequate protein intake we need to have most different different foods variety of foods so that we can get complete and incomplete protein sources as a diet it is also important to consume sufficient amount of other nutrients also along with the protein carbohydrates should be there fat should be there vitamins and minerals should be there and to support overall health of well being next whey protein is one of the example we are discussing an under protein whey protein is nothing but which is derived from the milk or liquid that separates from the milk uh, from the milk during the cheese making when you are cheese when you are using the milk to make cheese so you will get a separate liquid as a by product so that is we are calling it as a whey protein so it is a complete protein so that it contains all of the essential amino acids the body needs to build and repair tissues we have we, we know that we might have studied somewhere that the essential amino acids and non essential amino acids essential amino acids of uh, around you know 21 amino acids are there so all those amino acids will be present in this so whey protein is widely used as a dietary supplement particularly by athletes bodybuilders and people looking to increase their protein intake because it will be highly rich in protein because it contains all essential amino acids it is also commonly added to the smoothies shakes and as well as beverages it's also available in powder form that can be mixed into the other foods or beverages or even in simple milk or water we will can take so compared to the other types of the protein whey protein is rapidly absorbed by the body and is high in branched chain amino acids which are essential for muscle growth and repair that's why most of the bodybuilders and the people who go for gyms they usually will have that protein right this is for that reason it is also good source of essential nutrients including calcium potassium and vitamin b2 and b12 these all are essential nutrients which we require for cell growth and as well as the cell repair so however it is important to note that not all whey protein products are equal in terms of quality purity and nutrient nutrient contents whatever the companies are selling no they are not all are not quality uh, uh, they 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 want maintain the quality purity and the nutrition content we must see that they may contain added sugars artificial sweeteners or other ingredients which are going to be harmful for your health so when you buy something protein product and if you are using protein product you should see what are the nutrients what are the nutrient contents which is involved if any added sugar sweeteners are there better to avoid that 
so it is therefore important to choose a reputable brand and be care to carefully read the ingredients list before purchasing so use of whey protein as a food it can be used uh, since it is derived from the cow milk and it is commonly used as a food supplement there are several uses first thing sport nutrition weight management health promotion meal replacement whey protein is uh, available in a variety of forms including powders bars and drinks just now we discussed it is often added to smoothies baked goods and other product other food products to increase the protein content so that the product should be protein rich when using whey protein as food it is important to choose a high quality product that is free from artificial sweetener flavors and other additives discuss the same point in previous slides so it is also important to talk to a healthcare professional before starting to use a whey protein especially when one have any medical conditions or allergies if you are having any medical conditions like might be a diabetes patient or any kind bp patient or any kind of you know medical conditions are there or if you are allergic to some kind of foods you should consult health professional before you take that particular protein things that was about whey protein and the second example we have as a meat analogs of proteins so meat analogs in the sense it is not a meat but in meat whatever the proteins are there those will be extracted and you will be given as a protein supplement so that will act as a meat analog also known as meat substitutes or meat alternatives are nothing but again they are they are nothing like you are not extracting from the you know uh, any chicken or beef or whatever here it will be extracted from plants only so plant based foods designed to mimic the taste texture and as well as appearance of the meat so they are made up of made from the variety of ingredients including soy protein wheat protein and pea protein so these three things you remember this will be repeating in most of the slides and other plant based integrating ingredients also there and are, are often fortified with the vitamins and minerals to provide a similar nutritional profile of meat so meat analogs are a popular alternative to meat for many people why because including in vegetarians vegans and those who are looking for to reduce their meat consumption for health issues or ethical reasons ethical reasons in religion aspect or in health issues in sometimes a doctor will be suggesting you you should not eat non veg you should not eat chicken all those kind of conditions okay you can go for this particular meat analogs they can be a good source of protein and can help to meet the body's protein need because it contains almost all essential amino acids there are many different types of the meat analogs which are available including burgers sausages meatballs deli slices and more so some are designed to mimic the specific types of the meat such as chicken beef or pork while others are marked as a more generic that means meat like product <coughs> when choosing meat analogs it is important again to check whether any added sugars fats are there or not because they are harmful because this point is also repeating from the whey point whey protein it is also important to consider the texture taste and some meat analogs that can be more appealing than the others so examples we are having tofu tempeh seetan you can just go through that and veggie burgers meatless meatballs plant based sausages okay you can see this is a tofu we have tempeh we have seetan we have veggie burger we have meatless bay meatballs and as well as a plant based um, <coughs> sausages so plant based protein this is the third example so plant based proteins are nothing but the proteins which are derived from the plant sources as the name it indicates such as you have legumes grains nuts and seeds these are very commonly used especially for vegetarians and i guess almost all indian households will be using this so they are becoming increasingly popular as alternative to the animal based proteins especially for those following the vegetarian or vegan diet so here are some of the benefits of plant based proteins sustainability nutrient rich definitely versatile it can be used by any kind of stuff and then hypoallergenic so very less uh, this thing to the allergic and then cost effective so use of the plant based proteins dietary supplements food products health and wellness vegetarian and veg vegan diets and fitness and sport nutrition all these are the all main uses of the proteins so lipids we will discuss in the next uh video thank you